Welcome to Legion Builds, where I guide you on how to bring your favorite fictional characters into Dungeons & Dragons. This video and all my content is made possible by my Patreon supporters, and it's dedicated to every one of you who subscribes to my channel. Join the Legion today at patreon.com slash 63rd Legion for free and help decide next week's new character. Joining my paid tiers allows you early access to my content, a shout out in my videos, and homebrewed 5e items for your games. Today, it's back to the dark world of Tokyo Ghoul with Kotaro Amon, in a world where a race of humanoid creatures known as ghouls must feed on humans to survive, the CCG works to defend humanity against their scourge. Out of all its members, Amon is the most diligent ghoul hunter. Amon's life is one of pain and loss and it has forged him into the man he has become. Raised as an orphan by a loving priest, Amon was shocked to discover the priest was in fact a sadistic ghoul who used the orphanage to feed on children. Now seeing the world as wrong, Amon vowed to rid the world of ghouls. As a dove investigator, Amon wields massive weapons, like comically sized weapons. With these weapons, Amon struck down ghoul after ghoul. That was until he crossed paths with the man who would become the One-Eyed King. Defeated and captured by an evil organization and transformed into a half-ghoul, he was now forced to be the creature he hated for so long. Amon questioned his place in the world until meeting ghouls that had more compassion than most humans he had met. Now seeing he was part of an endless cycle of escalating violence, Amon swore a new oath to become a guardian of good creatures and not just humans. By the way, we're making ghoul Amon and not human Amon, but they are basically the same except four levels and your lineage. We're also going to be leaning more towards into the anime and not the manga just because I can't dedicate more levels to gain these unique abilities, but this is still going to be good. For today's build, we'll be using the Player's Handbook, Xanathar's Guide to Everything, and Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. We're using standard point array to make things simple and we are multi-classing, so keep an eye on those minimums. Make Strength 15, Charisma 14, Dex 13, Con 12, Intelligence 10, and we're dumping Wisdom with an 8. You start off as a very strict person who refuses to get close to people and kills ghouls indiscriminately, but you do become wiser, so we'll fix it later. Amon is a half-ghoul, a creature that must feed on flesh. Damphir from Van Richten's is a half-vampire, so it works pretty well. Place plus two into charisma and plus one into strength. Spider Climb gives you a climbing speed equal to your walking speed, which is 35 feet. Ancestral Legacy grants you skills from your former life. Grab Acrobatics and History. Deathless Nature means you don't breathe to survive. Dark Vision lets you see in dim light as if it's bright light, or darkness as if it's dim light out to 60 feet. Vampiric Bite lets you use your teeth to attack and take a bite out of someone. Your teeth count as simple melee weapons, which you are proficient with. You use your con for attack and damage, and you deal 1d4 piercing damage on a hit. If you are at or below half health, attacks with your teeth are at advantage. If you attack a creature that isn't undead or a construct, you can activate one of two features. These features are, you can heal yourself equal to the bite damage, or add the bite damage as a bonus to your next attack roll or skill check. You can do this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus between long rests. To finish out your lineage, you know the language common in a second of your choice. For background, we're actually going to be taking an actual background. Investigator from Van Richten's gives you the skills Investigation and Perception. You also have proficiencies in Disguise Kit and Thieves Tools. Level 1 Paladins start off with two skills. Take Athletics and Intimidation. You are proficient in all armor, shields, weapons, and the saving throws Charisma and Wisdom. Divine Sense gives you the ability to sense non-human creatures. With an action, you can open your awareness, and until the end of your next turn, you can sense the following creatures. Undead, fiends, or celestials. You can sense them if they are within 60 feet of you and not behind total cover. You can also sense sacred or evil objects or even places. You can do this a number of times times equal to your charisma modifier plus one between long rests. Lay on hand gives you a pool of healing that you can get between long rests. This pool equals your paladin level times five. With an action, you can touch a creature and taking from the pool, heal them equal to the points you took. You can also burn five points from the pool and heal one disease. Now in the new edition, this will be a bonus action and not an action. Level 2 Paladins get a Fighting Style. Great Weapon Fighting lets you re-roll the damage dice on a weapon that is being wielded with two hands when you roll a 1 or 2 on the damage. The weapon must have the two-handed or versatile property to gain this. Spell Casting lets you have spells that you can prepare equal to half your Paladin level plus Charisma modifier. A little heads up, Great Weapon Fighting and Spell Casting for Paladins will be changing soon. 
but I'm still going to go with the old way since the new edition isn't out yet. You're starting off with four first level spells. Before that, Divine Smite lets you burn spell slots to add 2d8 radiant damage and add a d8 for each level spell slot you burned higher than the first, and Hitting Fiends or Undead will add more damage. In the new edition, this will be a free spell that you always have prepared, but will work the exact same way. For your spells, Cure Wounds heals a creature you touch, including yourself, 1d8 plus your Charisma modifier. Shield of Faith targets a creature of your choice within 60 feet, including yourself, and adding plus 2 to their AC for 10 minutes while you maintain the spell. Thunderous Smite is a bonus action that adds 2d6 thunder damage to your weapon attacks and creates a massive boom when you hit. Additionally, they must succeed on a strength save or be pushed back 10 feet and fall prone. Wrathful Smite is a bonus action that adds 1d6 psychic damage damage to your attack and forces a wisdom save. Should they fail, they become frightened of you for one minute while you maintain the spell. A frightened creature has disadvantage on all skill checks and attack rolls when they can see what is frightening them and can't willingly move closer to the source of their fear. While this spell is active, the creature can use its action to make a wisdom check against your spell DC to end the spell. Level 3 Paladins now have access to their subclass. Vengeance from the Player's Handbook basically sums up how you spent your life until you became a ghoul. Channel Divinity allows you to activate one of two features once per short or long rest. For these features, Abjure Enemy lets you choose one creature within 60 feet of you with an action and force a wisdom save. Should they fail, they are now frightened of you for one minute. While frightened, their speed is reduced to zero and they can't benefit from any bonus to speed. Vow of Enmity lets you choose a creature within 10 feet of you with a bonus action. For one minute, it, all attack rolls against them are at advantage. Divine Health makes you immune to diseases. Oath spells are special spells you always have ready to go. For these spells, Hunter's Mark lets you mark a creature within 90 feet with a bonus action. For the next hour, while you maintain this spell, you will deal an extra 1d6 damage to the creature and will have advantage on perception and survival checks to find them. If they drop to 0 HP before the spell ends, you can transfer the mark to another creature within 90 feet with a bonus action. Bane lets you curse up to 3 Three creatures within 30 feet from you, forcing a charisma save on all three of them. Should they fail for the next one minute while they maintain the spell, all their attacks or saving throws must subtract 1d4 from the total. You've hit character level 3, your spider climb feature is upgraded. You can now move across any solid surface, including upside down, and leave your hands free. Level 4 Paladins earn our first ability score improvement, bump up strength for better attack and damage. You get another spell here, take what you want. Level 5 Paladins receive extra attack. You can now attack twice with a single attack action. You also receive second level spells. For your new Oath spells, Misty Step is a 30 foot teleportation, or maybe a burst of speed, you make with a bonus action. Hold Person traps a humanoid you can see within 60 feet, forcing a wisdom save. If they fail, they are paralyzed for one minute while you maintain the spell. A paralyzed creature can't take actions, reactions, can't move, can't speak, automatically fails strength and dex saves, all attack rolls against them are at advantage, and if they are hit by a creature within 5 feet, the hit is counted as critical. At the end of each of their turns, they may attempt to end the spell by retaking the save. Your character level 5, raise your proficiency bonus to plus 3. Level 1 Warlocks start off with a otherworldly patron. This will be at level 3 in the new edition, so make sure you pay attention to that. Hexblade from Xanathar's will make you a magical warrior. Hexblade's curse lets you mark a creature within 30 feet with a bonus action. For the next one minute, they are cursed, and you will now deal bonus damage equal to your proficiency bonus when you hit them, any attack rolls of 19 or 20 crit against them, and when they die, you regain HP equal to your Warlock level plus Charisma modifier. You can do this once per short or long rest. Hex Warrior allows you to bond with a weapon after a long rest. This weapon must lack the two-handed property and must be able to be held with at least one hand. Once bonded, you can now use your charisma for attack and damage, but your strength will always be great, so this feature doesn't really do anything for you. Add in the fact you only use massive two-handed weapons. Packed Magic makes you a fake spellcaster for the purpose of multi-classing. You will now have separate spell slots outside of your paladin slots, but you'll never have more than two for this build. You're starting out with two cantrips and two first level spells. For your spells, Eldric Blast fires your ranged Kagone out to 120 feet.
feet, dealing 1d10 force damage on a hit, and you can fire this two times with a single action. Booming Blade puts more force into your weapon attacks. When you cast this spell, you make one attack, dealing 1d8 thunder damage with the weapon on top of its normal damage, and then if they willingly move before the start of your next turn, they take an additional 2d8 thunder damage. Shield adds plus 5 to your AC as a reaction for one turn and automatically stops Magic Missile from hitting you. Cause Fear targets one creature within 60 feet and forces a Wisdom save. Should they fail, they are now frightened of you for one minute while you maintain the spell. At the end of each of their turns, they may attempt to end the spell by retaking the save. Level 2 Warlocks gain Eldritch Invocations. These are special features you gain through your patron. This will become a level 1 feature in the new edition, and will also have a new change we'll talk about next level. You'll get two at this level. For your invocations, Agonizing Blast increases your Eldritch Blast damage by adding your Charisma modifier. You get one more, but I'm not giving you one, because the new edition will be changing something into an invocation, and we have to have that. For your new spell, take what you want. Level 3 Warlocks receive a Pact Boon. These are special gifts you receive from your patron, and this is what we need to talk about. In the new edition, this will become an invocation, and you'll want to grab this at level 1. Pact of the Blade lets you summon your Kunki with an action. This is a magical weapon that takes on the form of your choosing, and regardless of your proficiencies, you can use this weapon. You can even combine it with Hex Warrior to remove the two-handed limitation from the bonding with the weapon. And you can bond with a magical weapon you find, and can now summon it with an action. You also receive second level spells. For your new spell, Blur speeds up your body, making you harder to target. For one minute while you maintain the spell, all attacks against you are at disadvantage, unless the creature attacking you can ignore illusions or doesn't rely on sight, like True Sight or Blind Sight. Level 4 Warlocks earn another Ability Score Improvement Cap Off Strength. For your new spell, take what you want. You also gain a new cantrip, have fun choosing. You've reached character level 9, raise your proficiency bonus again to plus 4. Level 6 Paladins now have Aura of Protection. Now whenever you or a friendly creature within 10 feet of you must make a saving throw, you and them gain a bonus equal to your Charisma modifier, even if you're already adding your Charisma modifier to the save. That being said, you must be conscious for this to work. For your new spell, Zone of Truth creates a 15-foot radius sphere out to 60 feet from you. Any creature that starts its turn in the sphere, or is there when the sphere appears, must make a Charisma save. If they fail for the next 10 minutes, they can not lie. You and them will know if the spell works, and they can actively avoid telling you the truth, but anything they say must be the truth. Level 7 Vengeance Paladins gain Relentless Avenger. Now when you hit with an opportunity attack, you can immediately move half your speed after them with the same reaction, and this movement doesn't provoke an attack of opportunity against you. Your character level 11, you can now fire Eldritch Blast three times with a single attack, and Booming Blade now does 2d8 extra thunder damage on the original hit, and 3d8 thunder damage if they willingly move. Level 8 Paladins earn another Ability Score Improvement Bump Up Charisma. For your new spells, Aid bolsters your allies, increasing their max HP and current HP by 5 for 8 hours. You can upcast this at higher spell levels to add more HP. You get one more spell of your choice, have fun. Level 9 Paladins now have 3rd level spells. For your Oath spells, Haste unlocks your Ghoul Physique. For 1 minute while you maintain this spell, your speed is doubled, you gain plus 2 to your AC, you have advantage on deck saving throws, and you gain an additional action that can be used like a single weapon attack. You can also dash, disengage, and a few other things. When this spell ends, you're drained of your energy and you can't move or take actions until the end of your next turn. Protection from energy grants you resistance to one damage type of your choice for one hour while you maintain the spell. This damage type can be acid, fire, cold, lightning, or thunder. New milestone, you are now character level 13. Bring your proficiency bonus up to plus four. Level 10 Paladins receive Aura of Courage. Now, while you are conscious, you and any friendly creature within 10 feet can't be frightened. For your new spell, Crusader's Mantle radiates power within a 30-foot radius centered on you for one minute while you maintain the spell. While active, you and any friendly creature within the Aurora deals an extra 1d4 radiant damage with their melee attacks. 
Level 11 Paladins gain Improved Divine Smite. Okay, now all melee weapon attacks deal an extra 1d8 radiant damage. Level 12 Paladins earn another Ability Score Improvement to cap off Charisma. For your new spells, take what you want. You get two here and we're good here till the next spell level, so have fun. Maybe find Steed to ride into battle. Just seriously, go nuts. Level 13 Paladins have 4th level spells. For your Oath spells, Banishment lets you banish a creature into a pocket dimension for 1 minute while you maintain the spell. Forcing a Charisma save on a creature within 60 feet. If they fail, they vanish while the spell is active. If they are a native to the plane you are on, they return when the spell ends. But if they are not a native, they return to their home plane when the spell ends. Dimension Door is a 500 foot teleportation you make with an action. To a spot you can see, visualize, or describe. If you teleport into some Thing, the spell fails and you take 4d6 force damage. This isn't really you, but for a while there you were doing the whole mysterious protector, vanish without a trace or just suddenly appear. Your character level 17, your proficiency bonus is now maxed out at a plus 6. Eldritch Blast now fires 4 times with a single action. Booming Blade now does 3d8 extra thunder damage with the original hit and 4d8 thunder damage if they willingly move. Level 14 Paladins receive Cleansing Touch. You can now use your action to end a spell affecting you or a willing creature you can touch. You can do this a number of times equal to your Charisma modifier between long rests. For your new spell, Death Ward protects you from dying for 8 hours. While this spell is active, if you should drop to 0 HP, the spell ends and you instead drop to 1 HP. This can also protect you from effects that instantly kill, like Power Ward Kill. When you are targeted by an effect that would kill you outright, the spell ends and the effect effect is negated. Level 15 Vengeance Paladins gain Soul of Vengeance. Now when you use your Vow of Emity against a creature, you can now use your reaction to attack them when they make an attack when they are within range of your weapon. Our final level is level 16 Paladin and you get our final ability score improvement and I really hate ending builds like this, but we need it. Place this into Wisdom to wipe out that negative. If you don't use Standard Point Array and don't have a negative in Wisdom, think about taking another level in Warlock. This will give you third level spells like the spell Vampiric Touch, which is definitely in line with your manga version. Now before we move on to the recap, if you are wanting to play a Mon Human and not a Mon Ghoul, drop all levels of Warlock for this build and change your lineage with Human and grab a nice feat like Savage Attack if you're using the new edition. If you still want to multi-class, think about Fighter and grab two weapon fighting for when you wielded that one weapon that can be turned into two weapons or a great sword. You can also go with Champion to keep the better critical attacks. Now that we've hit level 20, let's recap. Your stats are Strength 20, Dex 13, Con 12, Intelligence 10, Wisdom 10, Charisma 20. Your total levels are Warlock 4, Paladin 16. Let's dive in. You are a seriously dangerous fighter. Wielding a great sword, you're dealing 2d6 plus 5 plus 1d8 magical damage, and you can reroll 1 or 2 on the damage dice. You can add 3d8 thunder damage and up to 6d8 radiant damage. You can also make people frightened of you, knock them down, deal extra thunder damage if they move, paralyze them, attack them when they attack someone else, drop their speed to 0, crit on 19 or 20, and have advantage on the attack. You're also not limited on range with an attack that fires up to 4 times out to 120 feet, dealing 1d10 plus 5 force damage. Your movement is great with 35 feet normal, you can double that, teleport 30 feet to up to 500 feet, and can even run up walls. Finally, you're inspirational to your allies and good all around. You can make allies immune to being frightened, give allies boosts to their saving throws, can heal, can force enemies to tell the truth, curse enemies, and even boost AC. Downside. Firstly, your spells. You have some spells that require somatic components and you're wielding a two-handed weapon, though not many thankfully. You can also call on your weapon so you don't need to be holding it when you need your hands. You also have a lot of concentration spells, but you're a spellcaster so that's normal. It's just annoying. Your stats could also use some improvement. Your investigation isn't great with a zero for intelligence. Your con has left you with only 140 HP taking the average, and your wisdom is garbage until the end game. Your decks could also be better, but you have access to medium and heavy armor, which is in character for you. And thankfully you're adding plus five to all your saves anyway, so wisdom and intelligence saves aren't going to hurt you too much, even more so that you're a proficient in wisdom saves. 
stand against the wrongness of the world, but understand the difference between right and wrong better, and stop hiding from the world. You have a chance for true happiness, and you're not going to get them by avoiding things, and just doing push-ups all the time you feel like you're pent up. Thank you for joining me today. I'd like to give a special thank you to my Artificer tier. Thank you, John Martin, Jonathan Haynes, Christopher R. Hunter, and Java Squirrel. You guys rock. Make sure to like and subscribe to not miss a single new build each week on YouTube and Spotify, and make sure to check out my Patreon where you can help decide next week's new character. 